Hi, Roger Peterson here for CostaRicaLaw.com. In this video, I'm going to go over residency in Costa Rica. How do you live legally in Costa Rica by getting your legal residency status? There's a lot of information, or I should say misinformation out there uh, in some of the blogs and some of the posts that I see. Um, so the idea here is to give you facts, 100% facts based on the actual law, on the immigration law. So let's get started. My goal in this video is that you're able to walk away understanding the following topics. One, the immigration categories. What are they and what do you need to qualify? Two, what documents do you need in order to apply for residency? Three, how does the application filing process work? Where do I file it? We'll go over these issues. Then once you filed, what happens in the meantime? What do you do? How do you on your wait? We'll discuss that. And finally, once you're approved, how do you get your residency card and what do you have to do once you're approved? The first thing I need to point out is that everything related to residency in Costa Rica is handled by the Department of Immigration. Dirección General de Migración y Extranjería is located in San Jose and here you can see some images of different uh, stages of the immigration processing services. The immigration law provides three main residency categories. Permanent residency, temporary residency, and special categories. For these purposes, I'm gonna focus mostly on temporary residency, and the reason we do that is, it is the most common initial classification for most people applying for residency in Costa Rica. So we'll focus on that. And these include, pensionado, retiree, rentista, you're receiving income, and the investor status. The first category I'm going to discuss is the pensionado residency. That means the residency is based on a pension. You need to have a lifetime pension. The minimum pension required is $1,000 per month. Now with that $1,000, that includes your spouse as a dependent on your application. Some examples of pension, it could be Social Security, a disability pension, government pension, or a private pension. Any of these will qualify you for pensionado residency. The rentista residency category is available for those of you that don't have a pension, um, and it's gonna require you to prove that you have an uh, income of $2,500 per month. For that amount, it's gonna include also your spouse and any children that you have under the age of 25. You'll be able to bring them all in as dependents. So how do you prove your income? The easiest way to prove it is to get a letter from your bank or financial institution either in the US, Canada, Europe, wherever you have your bank, or if not, from a Costa Rican bank. And the letter must state that you're gonna receive $2,500 per month for at least two years. Key words to include in that letter are the words permanent and stable. This, the reason for this is because that's what's stipulated in the actual law. The next category is the investor residency. And as the name implies, it requires you to make an investment and the minimum investment is $200,000. Now once approved, it's going to include your spouse and any children under the age of 25. So you're wondering, okay, what do I have to invest in? What do I need to invest in order to get this category? Uh, the law has expanded and it now allows investments to be made in real property, purchasing shares of a company, negotiable instruments, productive projects, or projects that Costa Rica deems of national interest. The most important distinction here is that it now allows investment in real estate. You can buy your house, you can buy a condo, vacation property, any of these real estate purchases will qualify you for the investor category. Okay, let's pause a second and answer a question that I'm often asked, which is, what are the benefits of having a residency anyway? Do they give me discounts? Do I get tax exemptions on things that I bring into the country? Are they gonna waive import duties? Um, often you compare other countries and they may have uh, incentives for you to bring things into the country. Costa Rica does not. So residency in Costa Rica does not give you any financial benefit other than the legal status to remain in the country. So now that we got that out of the way, let's continue. Okay, I'm gonna jump straight into the application process. Right now on the screen, we have a sample uh, application. This one's for pensionado residency. This one is in English for purposes of the example, because they need to be in Spanish in order to be filed with the Department of Immigration. So let's look at this in a little bit more uh, detail. The top part describes the applicant, information about their parents, 
uh, entry dates to Costa Rica, source of the pension. The second page, we put the supporting documentation, which we're going to discuss here in the next uh, slides. And where to receive notices, signature date, and authentication by a notary public. And that's it. That's the application. Next, let's discuss a little bit more about the supporting documents. Okay, in this section, I'm going to discuss the supporting documents that must accompany your residency application. Number one, birth certificate. Apply for a birth certificate from the place that you were born. Second, a police clearance certificate. This needs to be issued by the police authority in the place where you're currently residing. If you're applying with your spouse, you need to attach a marriage certificate to the application. Proof of income source. If you recall from the last uh, section that we discussed the different uh, sources of income, if you're applying for pensionado, show proof of a lifetime pension. If you're applying for rentista, show us the income letter. And if you're applying for investor, then provide documentation of the investment that was made. Five, get a copy of your entire passport. That means yes, even the blank pages. Six, you need to register with your local embassy. Contact your local embassy to find out what the procedures are for registration. Seven, photographs. I suggest you have at least six photographs for the entire process. Power of attorney to your legal representative. If you're being represented by somebody in Costa Rica, they need a power of attorney to be looking at your file. Nine, hoja de afiliación. This is the personal background form. It's popping up on the screen now. Uh, so you can take a look at it and see what it looks like so you can become familiar with the form. It must be attached to your application. Some of the documents that we just discussed need to go through an authentication process to be valid in Costa Rica. So in this next section, I'm going to focus on how to authenticate the documents. If the country that issued the document is a member of the Hague Treaty, then the document can be apostilled. This is a validation stamp that certifies the document. For example, the U.S. and the European Union, they are both members of the treaty, so the documents can follow this procedure. If your country is not a member of the Hague Treaty for recognizing foreign documents, then you have to follow the regular legalization process. For example, Canada is not a member, so therefore those documents have to follow this chain of authentication. The next step is to have all your documents translated into Spanish. They have to be translated by an official translator and they're available on the website of the Ministry of Foreign Relations of Costa Rica, which you can see here on the screen. You can search by language and then hire a translator to translate the documents for you. Now that you have all your documents ready, you are ready to pay the filing fee and file the application before the Department of Immigration. Better yet, you can hire somebody to do the process for you and you won't have this look on your face. To file in Costa Rica, you're going to pay an application fee of $250. And you also have to pay colonies 125 plus 2.50 colonies for each page of the application. That is the government filing fee. Once filed, you're going to be issued a receipt like the one shown on the screen indicating that you have filed your application and it's going to indicate your application file number. Now that you filed your application, the question is how long until I get approved? The times vary depending on the file and how many applications are pending at immigration at the time. We're seeing ranges that go from 7 to 15 months, with the average probably being around 12. Once your application is approved, it is done so by way of a resolution issued by the Department of Immigration. As you can see up here on the screen, that's what the resolution looks like. That is the approval of your residency. Then the final step is to ask for an appointment uh, at Immigration for them to set a date to pick up your residency card. On the date of your final appointment to pick up your residency card, you need to bring with you one Receipt of payment to Banco de Costa Rica to cover the guarantee bond. It's approximately $300 because it fluctuates due to the exchange rate. Receipt of payment again to Banco de Costa Rica, this time for $123 to cover the immigration use fee and the residency card. Bring your passport with you. And finally, you need to provide proof of registration and payment to the Costa Rican healthcare system, the CAJA. It's mandatory that you pay into the healthcare system. Now that you're done and have residency card in hand, it is time to start enjoying Costa Rica. For more information, be sure to visit us at CostaRicaLaw.com or pick up a copy of the Legal Guide to Costa Rica.